Welcome to the CyberLife Podcast, where we help you learn cybersecurity best practices, give you a weekly update on the latest cybersecurity news, and share valuable career advice. Hey everyone, it's Ken. Thanks so much for listening today. In this episode, you will hear from Dr. KVN Rashish. Dr. Rashish is a highly accomplished and certified Microsoft trainer. He focuses on Azure security and also identity and access management, which he'll be speaking about in this episode. He's a subject matter expert over at a company called Cloud That in India, and he's trained over 10,000 people. He's got a PhD in deep learning, won multiple awards. So overall, just a really good guy and really a, a strong knowledge individual around identity access management and all things around cloud security, especially in the Azure space. So without further ado, let's jump right in and talk to Dr. Rashish. So welcome to the show. Uh, glad to have you on today. and. Um, Let's just go ahead and dive right into uh, talking about our topic today, which is identity and access management in the cloud. So I want to start off and just talk about, for especially for the listeners that are brand new to, to anything technical, especially the cloud, what is identity and access management and why is it so important? Yeah, thank you, Ken, uh, for uh, inviting me to your show. So yeah, that's a wonderful question. Uh, Ken, I am, or uh, I can say identity and access management is a framework that enables the organizations to control and manage access to their digital resources. So we have seen the pandemic and uh, after that, most of the people are uh, working from home. Now only security check that is happening is by using the identity. So what is my identity? So my identity is nothing but my username and my password. And what is access? Access is nothing but like your role in the organization and the way you are given access based on the role. So that is the clarity I want to give about identity and access management. And it involves managing user identities, their authentication and authorization to various systems and applications. So I can say that IAM plays a crucial role in ensuring data security, privacy, and compliance by allowing organizations to grant appropriate access privileges to individuals based on their roles and responsibilities. So here in this context, IAM is important for several reasons. Firstly, it helps protect sensitive information from unauthorized access, mitigating the risk of data breaches. Secondly, it enables the organizations to enforce the principle of least privilege, granting users only the necessary access rights, reducing the attack surface. Thirdly, I am simplifies user onboarding and offboarding processes, enhancing operational efficiency. Lastly, I can say I am provides auditing and accountability capabilities, enabling organizations to monitor user activities and maintain compliance with regulations. Thanks for providing that overview of IAM and also uh, some of the key reasons why it's important. What are the different types of identity access management users? Uh, when it comes to IAM users, there are two main types, human users and system users. If you take human users, they represent individuals within an organization who require access to various resources, such as employees, contractors, or partners. And when it comes to system users, they're also known as service accounts or application accounts, and they represent non-human entities within an organization's infrastructure. And these users are typically associated with applications, services, or automated processes. So altogether, I want to tell you that I am encompasses both human users who represent individuals within the organization and 
system users which are non human entities associated with applications and services so how do you actually create and manage those iem users yeah that's a very good question so creating and managing iem users involves a few key steps so first thing you have to go for provisioning so administrators create iem user accounts by providing necessary information such as username email and other required attributes then comes authentication like uh, you use passwords multi factor authentication or federated identity providers like azure ad or google next one is authorization mainly it ensures users have access only to the resources they need to perform their tasks next is life cycle management so throughout the user's journey within the organization administrator handle user life cycle events such as onboarding role changes and offboarding all together finally you have to monitor and maintain so i am user accounts should be regularly reviewed and audited to ensure accuracy security and compliance what are iem policies and can you tell everyone how those actually work certainly can iem policies are like building blocks of access management within iem so they are uh, json documents uh, that define permissions and rules for an iem users groups and roles each policy uh, consists of one or more statements where each statement includes an effect set of actions and the resources to which the actions apply so iem policies are uh, flexible and allow for fine grained control over access permissions altogether if you associate these policies with iem identities administrators can effectively manage access to resources and enforce the principle of least privilege ensuring that users have only the necessary permissions to perform that tasks So you're a multi-cloud expert, but in particular, you focus on Microsoft Azure. How do you use identity access management to control access to those different Azure resources? Absolutely, in Azure, IAM is used to control access to Azure resources because I basically belong to Azure uh, related uh, day-to-day work. so i am familiar mostly familiar with this azure environment so azure iam provides a centralized and granular access control system for managing identities and their permissions to control access administrators can use azure active directory to create and manage user accounts groups and service principles they can then assign roles to these identities using azure rbac so what is rbac rbac is nothing but role based access control so azure rbac includes built in roles with predefined permissions as well as the ability to create custom roles so by assigning roles to identities administrators can control who can perform specific actions on azure resources so what are some of the best practices that you recommend around identity access management security absolutely can that's a wonderful question so when it comes to iam security i can say use strong and unique passwords uh it can be humorous password but i can say use a password like i am so secure even chuck norris crack sme 1 2 3 something like that or you can go for enable mfa to add an extra layer of security uh, remember it's like needing two keys to open that treasure chest regularly review and audit user permissions you treat it like a spring cleaning session for access rights remove what's unnecessary and keep things tidy 
you implement the principle of least privilege so give users only the permissions they need to perform their tasks it's like offering a single cookie instead of the entire jar monitor user activity and set up alerts for suspicious behavior you need to stay vigilant like a hawk guarding its nest and by following all these best practices i can say the organizations in today's generation they can strengthen their iam security and keep the digital fortress secure from cyber villains so one of the challenges in any environment and especially in cloud environments is the monitoring like finding out what's actually going on so how do you recommend organizations out there monitor their identity access management activity uh i can say monitoring i am activity is crucial for maintaining a secure environment so you need to implement comprehensive logging and enable auditing so it's like having a cctv camera in the digital realm and uh, yeah you need to set up alerts for suspicious activities or unauthorized access attempts you have to think if uh, you are uh, uh, having a guard dog that barks when something fishy happens and regularly review access logs and analyze user behave patterns it's like a detective sniffing out any unusual activities you need to utilize uh, security information and even management solutions we call it as sim solutions mainly to centralize and analyze log data it's like uh, having a super smart assistant who brings you all the evidence together so all together you have to leverage anomaly detection algorithms to mainly identify abnormal patterns of activity it's like having a sixth sense to detect the unexpected so can uh, i can say that by implementing all these monitoring practices definitely organizations they have the potential secure they can handle the potential security threats and keep them guarded so how do you recommend troubleshooting different iam problems that might be going on in the environment yeah when troubleshooting iam problems uh, organizations can follow some of the steps like they can review iam policies and permissions to ensure they are correctly configured it's like double checking the instructions before assembling a complicated piece of furniture and check for any misconfigurations in user accounts or roles i can say it's like inspecting the puzzle pieces to see if they fit together properly and you need to verify that the appropriate iam roles are assigned to users and resources and you need to examine relevant logs and error messages to identify any specific issues or error codes yeah uh, can by following all these troubleshooting troubleshooting steps definitely organizations can effectively diagnose and uh, resolve the iam problems so what are some of the challenges you see with iam management certainly iam management comes out with its own set of challenges like complexity so iam management can become complex especially in large organizations with numerous users roles and resources so here keeping track of permissions ensuring proper access and maintaining consistency across systems can be challenging user life cycle management is another key aspect so managing user life cycles including onboarding offboarding and role changes can be time consuming and prone to errors without streamlined processes and automation definitely you have to maintain user experience so you have to balance security with seamless user experience and it will be a challenging thing i understand and here comes the actual uh, implementation part like to strike the right balance between strong authentication measures and user convenience which requires careful consideration you need to go for integration you need to integrate iam with various applications systems and cloud platforms it can be complex especially when you deal with heterogeneous environments and uh, legacy systems 
so i can say by addressing these challenges through well defined processes automation and leveraging robust iam solutions definitely organizations can overcome the hurdles and effectively manage iam to enhance security and productivity so artificial intelligence or ai for short is one of those massively popular topics right now while we're recording this episode. What do you see as those future emerging trends around IEM? Yeah, absolutely. So we can expect a lot of uh, uh, trends in IEM. I can figure out few as per my understanding. One thing is increased adoption of zero trust. So IAM will play a vital role in implementing zero trust security frameworks where access is continuously verified and authenticated regardless of the user's location or network. So the slogan for zero trust is trust no one, verify everything. Even uh, I can say the CEO of the organization should be properly checked when uh, allowing him or her to access the resources of the organization. that is what is the major meaning of trust no one verify everything there should be emphasis on user centric iam that can be a future trend like user experience will be a priority as i mentioned in my previous points also with iam solutions focusing on providing seamless and personalized experiences while maintaining security and as you rightly pointed out can a is going to rule the world and integration with a and ml is one of the future trend of iam so iam will leverage artificial intelligence and machine learning mainly to enhance authentication detect anomalies and automate user behavior analysis for improved security and apart from a and ml like we can expand iam to iot and cloud as already we know in cloud iam is vastly used we can enhance it more and more apart from that iam will extend to reach to encompass identity management for iot devices and more focus will be to expand it as much as possible for the cloud based services when compared to the existing one so that we can enable secure transactions and access control and yeah we have a very good uh, emerging field blockchain for identity verification so blockchain technology i can see is one of the most trending thing in the present world and maybe leverage to create decentralized and tamper proof identity verification systems mainly to enhance trust and security in iam so all together keeping all these major trending technologies in mind so organizations can adapt to evolve security challenges enhance the user experience and ensure secure access management to the digital landscape of the future So most organizations these days are operating at a at a global scale so they're dealing with all these different security regulations how can IAM help you actually comply as an organization with those different security regulations Yeah that's the most relevant question so IAM provides a framework to enforce security regulations by allowing organizations to manage and control user access to resources so by implementing iam organizations can define and enforce fine grain permissions track user activities and ensure adherence to regulatory requirements yeah so this is the way they can comply with the security regulations what are some of the most common i am mistakes you see in cloud environments uh the infamous i am blunders i can point out some common mistakes 
like using generic or weak passwords like password one to three. So let's leave those in the past and uh, granting excessive privileges to users. It's like the all you can access buffered approach. Neglecting regular reviews of user permissions. It's like leaving the back door unlocked and not implementing multi-factor authentication. It's like leaving the front door wide open for the intruders. So I can say by avoiding these pitfalls and implementing best practices, definitely today's organizations can avoid that dreaded IAM and uh, maintain a robust security posture. How can you actually help prevent against IAM security breaches? Yeah, so we have a famous saying, uh, Prevention is better than cure. So to prevent IAM security breaches, definitely today's generation organizations, they can implement a, a very, what we can say, important measures. So they include enforcing strong password policies and uh, multi-factor authentication. So regularly review and update user permissions. Monitor user activities for suspicious behavior. See if uh, I'm the regular employee of the organization or I am the regular user of the organization, I will have a peculiar behavior. And if some intruder enters into the organization, definitely the behavior will be in a suspicious manner. So we have a lot of analytics coming into the picture. So definitely, we can do thorough analysis and we can easily plot the suspicious behavior. So the technology is huge and we have so many options there to plot these kind of suspicious behavior. And uh, encrypting sensitive data is one more important thing. And of course, staying vigilant with security patches and updates is also the need of the hour. So additionally, providing comprehensive security training to users and employing robust IAM solutions that offer advanced threat detection and prevention capabilities, I can say it can greatly enhance the overall security posture and help potential breaches being overcome. So what are some of the benefits of using a cloud-based IAM solution? As we know, all the organizations are moving from on-premises environment to cloud. Now the cloud is uh, leading the world. Cloud technology is leading the world. And cloud-based IAM solutions bring several benefits. So they offer scalability, allowing organizations to easily accommodate growing user bases and expanding resource requirements. And uh, it provides centralized management access control, simplifying administration across multiple systems and environments. So cloud IAM, IAM solutions often have built-in security features and comply with industry standards, reducing the burden of maintaining security infrastructure. Additionally, cloud-based IAM offers seamless integration with other cloud services, enabling organizations to leverage a comprehensive and cohesive cloud ecosystem. So you mentioned some of the benefits of using these cloud-based IAM solutions, but what are some of the challenges or some of those disadvantages of using these solutions as well? Certainly, Ken, there are a lot many challenges that are to be addressed. They can include data privacy and security in the cloud environment, managing complex integrations with various cloud services and platforms, addressing potential vendor locking concerns and adapting to the dynamic nature of cloud environments. Additionally, organizations need to be carefully considering connectivity and availability requirements to ensure uninterrupted access to the cloud-based IAM solution. So I can say proper planning 
thorough risk assessments and selecting reliable and compliant cloud provider can help address these challenges effectively. Any, uh, any final thoughts or advice you want to share with listeners around identity access management in the cloud? In the present situation, as per the analysis, cybercrime is to cost the world 8 trillion annually. So that's what the statistic says. And uh, if we take the thorough analysis, cybercrime would be the world's third largest economy after the US and China. This is as per the statistics I got from various sources of uh, news. So taking all these statistics into consideration, what I feel is there is a weapon in our hand that is identity and access management. First thing is we need to protect our identity and Definitely, we have to follow the most important features of strong authentication and authorization so that we can protect our identity online. And then definitely, whatever accesses we are making, they have to be restricted accesses. As I told in my previous what we say, uh, session of the episode that there should be strict, strict implementation of zero trust. So you have to verify everyone and then implement the most significant access policies so that the restrictions are in place. So if this happens, definitely we can build a safer world and we'll be away from the cyber crime and the present, uh, whatever the threats that we are facing will be definitely reduced with the strong implementation of IA. Thanks for listening to the show. If you're looking to secure your business better or build up your cybersecurity career, then check us out over at cyberlife.tv. That's C-Y-B-E-R-L-I-F-E dot T-V.